When we're talking about the righteousness of God, we're talking about the ability to stand in God's presence without any sense of guilt or condemnation or inferiority. And when a person has sin consciousness, he or she are eager to involve themselves in religious activity. The tendency is that if I do enough work, I'll be all right with God. So sin consciousness destroys faith. And without faith, you cannot please God. When you make up your mind you're going to live by faith, you have just made up your mind to walk with God. Yeah. And if you're going to walk with Him and fellowship with Him, you're going to have to hear Him. Yeah. See, you don't have any problem with faith. What you have a problem with is righteousness. You have a problem with fellowship. Because once righteousness and fellowship comes, faith flows. God wants to walk with you again, talk with you again, tell you things again, teach you again. you got to see this because if you could hear God, one word from God can change your whole life. Now, by the way, how do you receive righteousness? By faith. See, you don't feel, I, I don't feel righteous this morning. Well, how does righteous feel? You see what I'm saying? You're going back to unrighteousness again. But righteousness is something that is needed for your faith to flow like it should. As a matter of fact, glory to God, I, I must, I must, I just stay where you are, please. If you put this scripture down, it's found in 1 Peter, uh, pardon me, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Here's what it says. Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that obtain, have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. You see, through the righteousness, faith comes by hearing, okay? Faith comes by hearing. But he is saying here that, that for me to walk in that kind of faith, I'm going to have to have the righteousness of God. For me to, to be able to develop the kind of faith that I want to faith have, I must have that. Okay, so um, in John chapter, what did I tell you? Five. Okay, John chapter 5, he says here in verse 30, I can of myself do nothing. This is Jesus talking. How do I know that? It's in the red. As I hear, I what? Judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Now that's a lot of revelation in that particular verse right there. Because right there, he is really giving you the foundation for being able to hear the voice of God is that one, seek not your own will. You see, you've got to trust your will to the Father and believe that God is for you. Believe that God is not going to let you fail. Now, what you can't listen to is you can't listen to your mind because your mind don't know you. Your mind does not know you, neither really does your mother. Now, I ain't talking about your mama, but you're, it, it, it really, she, I, I'm just saying, you know, they think they know you, but they really don't because God put something in you that they don't even know is in you yet. You got what I'm saying? So notice when the Holy Spirit comes in you, what he's doing is guiding you to expose that which God has placed in you so that you can be all that God has intended for you to be. And people who think they know you end up holding you back where you're not supposed to be. And what we're doing is many times waiting for a feeling before we move instead of hearing the voice of God and moving based on that voice. Yes, sir. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right. Now, this is very important in these last days because people are trying to get to the wealthy place without hearing the voice of God. It won't happen. It won't happen. Yeah, I'm telling you, you've got to hear the voice of God because when that voice comes, you, it brings faith with it. See, faith... When, when, when unrighteousness came in, faith was destroyed. Fear came in. But when righteousness comes back, faith comes back. You got what I'm saying? He said, the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. Righteousness brings quietness and assurance. 
See, when you pray, you need assurance that you've been heard. Yes, sir. That's why Jesus could say, Father, I thank you that you hear me always, because he walked in righteousness. He had fellowship with the Father. But when a person is un in unrighteousness, they pray and go away and don't know whether God heard them or not. They have no assurance. But once you pray and, have, and do it in righteousness, the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. God's eyes, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. See? So you know you've been heard. Why? Because I'm the righteousness of God. Why? Because I'm in his class. Why? Because I'm his son. Why? Because I'm in fellowship with him. You got what I'm saying? Righteousness means I got rights. I got rights. God said, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desire of him. Now, if you're in unrighteousness, you don't know you have. You be praying the same prayer the next day, praying the same prayer the next day, praying the same prayer the next day. And then you go to the scripture that says, knock and it shall be uh, open to you. And you just keep on knocking, keep on knocking. That don't mean knock all the time. It means knock one time and then believe you received the answer for it. You got what I'm saying? Now, uh, oh, where was I? Praise God. Okay. Now, I just want to show you this. Now, here's that scripture and verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. He says this in the Amplified. I'm reading out the Amplified translation. I am able to do nothing for myself independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. Got it? As I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge. Judge means I decide as I am bidden to decide. As the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. And my judgment is right or just or righteous because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what I, uh, what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Yes. Praise God in heaven. All right. So now when we look at this, we're looking at this whole idea of having the will of the Father, that God knows what's in you. So you've got to trust yourself and transfer your trust from people to God so that you can hear the voice of God. He said to him that has ears to hear, come on, let him hear. See what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Because there are people don't, that have ears, but they don't have ears to hear. See, that did we, as we go on in this thing, he said, many are called, but what? Few are chosen. See, few actually act on what God has said. So now as we look at this, you, we have to do what God says. So he's restoring all things, Joel chapter 2. God is restoring your relationship where you can walk and talk with God once again. Say amen to that. All right, look what it says here. I'm going to read here in verse 9. You have you got it? Of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that do what? Love him. But God has what? Reveal them to us, come on, by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man that's in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are, that are, that are, I like that, freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the who teaches. The Holy Ghost teaches. So who's going to be teaching you? 
So once we get born again, we get a new nature. That's born again. That's only born again. You just got a new nature. Now the Holy Spirit is with you, meaning that he operates around you and, and is, is able to work with you because now your nature is more in line with the nature of God. But once you get born again, now you want to get filled with the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit now is in you. I remember this lady one time in Minneapolis when we had started the ministry there, she came to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we got some people filled with the Holy Spirit. And here she was sitting up there and, and she just couldn't seem to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then uh, we had tried, I mean, about a half an hour. And then I backed off and I just said, wait a minute. And I sat back in the chair and I said, God, what's up with that? What's, what's wrong here? He said, she got witchcraft in the family. Just like that. I said, ma'am, I said, excuse me, is there any witchcraft in your family? The two ladies that brought her, they began, oh my, oh God, and so forth. They said that her daddy practices witchcraft. Well, somehow maybe he had cursed or put a curse, I don't know what had happened, but I broke the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus and laid hands on her. She Now, notice where I got the information from. I got it from the Holy Ghost. But unless I lean on him, you got what I'm saying? I'm saying you're in a time now where sorcery is picking up. You need to know the voice of the good shepherd. You need to know exactly what you need to do and why something ain't working. And all we need to do is sit back a minute, do, be, commit ourselves to do the will of the Father. First Corinthians, okay, all right, let me, just, uh, let me just read that. Look what it says in verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are, come on, foolishness to him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, natural man, the natural part of you, the natural part of you receives not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Now, let me show you this. Look at chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. And in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, look what it says in verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. But the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, and not many mighty, and not many noble are called. But God has chosen, come on, say it with me, the foolish things of the world, come on, but found the wise, and God has chosen, come on, the weak things of the world, come on, to confound the things that are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, the things which are not to bring to naught, come on, the things that are. Now, realize that when he leads you many times, it seems foolish. You got what I'm saying? And the reason why a lot of people have delayed their blessing is because they're trying to make it fit the wisdom of men. But it's not doing that. Say amen. Now, he said to him that has ears to hear, come on, let him hear. Turn with me to Luke chapter 5. God told me, he said, I want you to go to Chicago. Say, I don't. I said, Lord, don't have no money. He said, didn't ask you if you had any money. Notice what Jesus said. He just does the command, see. 
See, he's just obedient. He said, I'm just going to do the will of the Father. I'm not going to ask the Father. I'm not going to try to logically reason out why the Father told me this. Because the Father may know there's something in me that I don't know is in me. I'm telling you right now why a lot of people don't grow spiritually. Because they're trying to make it fit or conform to the world. And God is just the opposite. He's going to make it look foolish. But people say, well, nah, I don't know about that. Now, I had $200, $200 and, and no place really of our own to stay. But God said, go. Now, look what came out of that go. Now, are you, are you with me what I'm saying here? Glory to God. Everybody that gave that sacrifice seed, it might be some people in here tonight. There are people, I remember, one of the people, they gave the sacrifice seed that night, and that was her rent money, and she gave it. Now, that's foolish, but that's no more foolish than the Holy Spirit spoke to the man of God with the woman who had one more meal left and said, feed me with that one. Now, once that happened, then the lady said she sold it because it wasn't quite enough or something like that. She sold it, gave it as a sacrifice seed, and somebody came back and blessed her with rent money. But then she showed up and she said, Pastor, I want to sow this. I said, wait a minute, I thought somebody blessed you with that. Yeah, that's right. I said, well, aren't you going to keep that? She said, no, the rent ain't due for a few more days. <laughs> My point is, is that your logical mind, see, is trying to do something that people will accept. But go in the Bible and find out where Jesus did something that people accepted. He, he told a blind man, he said, you're blind? He said, all right. Spit on the ground, put it on his eyes. And I'm saying that was not acceptable. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm saying we want to please men and not please God. We want to do the will of men, but not the will of God. No, you got to see this because if you could hear God, one word from God can change your whole life. So now, Peter, he was on the shoreline, and he had been fishing all night, and they were washing the nets. But he had an ear to hear. That's why Jesus chose it. You got to see it, see? Now, how did I know that? The Holy Ghost taught me. See, he would hear. There are people in here, they would hear. That lady would hear, but others wouldn't hear. They had the money, but they wouldn't hear. All right, all right. <laughs> See, they, had, they didn't have ears to hear. They didn't want to hear that. I ain't going to hear that. No, I ain't gonna, this is my last. I ain't hearing that. Like I told you in an offering message, I said, you are not intended to take care of yourself. Right. You were not intended. The fellowship that Adam had, God took care of him. That's when right. Adam sinned, that's the time Adam grabbed some fig leaves and put them on himself trying to take care of himself. Right. And even God came and after God pronounced the curses and so forth, God said, get them leaves off. And he took some, 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 some animal skin because he skinned an animal and that was a cutting of the first covenant. That's where blood flowed and took him and wrapped up Adam and Eve. Let God clothe you. Come on, let God take care of you. Let God meet every need you got. Let God do this. Look at Luke chapter 17. So you don't have any problem with faith. What you have a problem with is righteousness. You have a problem with fellowship. Because once righteousness and fellowship comes, faith flows. It's not faith, it's righteousness. 
We need that fellowship back again. You need to know that God is your father, that you're in the family, that he's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. And you get that in your spirit, faith will flow because you'll have ears, come on, to hear. You'll be willing to hear it. You'll be happy to hear it. You just want something else now to act on. You say, hey, praise God. I did that, Lord. Give me something else. Right? Give me something else. Why? Because you trust him. Jesus was in the same situation. Don't be thinking that, well, Jesus, you know, that was Jesus. No, no, no. He had to function like a man. He had to function like Adam. He was called the last Adam. He had to function in righteousness just and believe it by faith, just like you got to do. God wants to walk with you again, talk with you again, tell you things again, teach you again. Folks, when we get to heaven, don't think we're going to stop learning. God's going to get you in heaven and take you out to the outer stretches of the universe. And he's going to say, let me show you how I formed that right there. I did this and see it. And you're going to be trying to imitate it. Woo! I'm telling you, we're going to have the time of our life. for you means life that's right now. It's a God life right now. You're not going to get to talk with God when you get to heaven. You can talk with God right now. Eternal life is right now. Your blessing is right now. You can get a mansion right now. You can get your perfect health right now. You can get your peace right now. You can get your joy right now. Verse 11, and it came to pass when the, he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men that were lepers, and they stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Master, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw him, he said to them, Go show yourself to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, what happened to them? They were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, Turned back with a loud what? Voice. And glorified who? God. He fell down on his face and his feet, at, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answered and said, Now were not there ten cleanse? Now how did Jesus know there were ten cleanse? He was basing that on, on, on the word that he gave. He said, If he spoke the word, go show yourself to the peace priest. And they went. God did the rest. But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said to him, Arise and go thy way. What has made you whole? Your faith made you whole. God takes the foolish things, come on, to confound the wise. Amen. It goes against logic, and it continues to do that. And we try to look for that logical path because we want to be one accepted. We think that's the way that for success. I trust that you are blessed by this powerful teaching. Today's message, Hearing the Voice of God, is part of an exciting four-disc series. Now, here's a very important point to remember. The key to operating on the frequency of hearing the voice of God is to trust the will of God and seeking not your own will. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 5 and verse 30. I could of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgments are just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who has sent me. You see, when Jesus trusted his will to the Father's will, the Father gave him specific instructions as to what to do, and he came out a winner every time. Praise God. Well, our announcer is going to give you some important information on how you can order this powerful series on hearing the voice of God, and I'll be right back. When we're talking about the righteousness of God, we're talking about the ability to stand in God's presence without any sense of guilt or condemnation or inferiority. And when a person has sin consciousness, he or she are eager to involve themselves in religious activity. The tendency is that if I do enough work, I'll be all right with God. 
So sin consciousness destroys faith. And without faith, you cannot please God. When you make up your mind you're going to live by faith, you have just made up your mind to walk with God. And if you're going to walk with Him and fellowship with Him, you're going to have to hear Him. So you don't have any problem with faith. What you have a problem with is righteousness. You have a problem with fellowship. Because once righteousness and fellowship comes, faith flows. God wants to walk with you again, talk with you again, tell you things again, teach you again. you got to see this because if you could hear God, one word from God can change your whole life. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
fear Let the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy And silently, it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer no exposure, I just wanna be a loner uh, Some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders Like moving boulders just to get out of the home It sucks, I've had enough, I don't wanna feel the stuck Under the rug, all my problems that I shove I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird Good enough, nothing's really clear Sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But let's be really real, anxiety can foggy Yo, all this stuff It sucks, when you finally feel like giving up Oh God, no luck, everything feels like you're sticky stuck I'm lost, handcuffed, to the bed where I sleep Don't give a fuck, can't stop, unplug, feeling over